member on the House Budget Committee. He's also a member of President Obama's Fiscal Commission. We also have CNBC contributor and former Labor Secretary Robert Rice, who is the author of Super Capitalism. And gentlemen, the topic du jour this evening, the topic de nuit this evening, is a tax attack on my cherished V-shaped recovery. And I want to read, let me just bear with me for one second, a very interesting article in Barron's from Citibank. They are arguing if the Bush tax cuts expire in their entirety, everybody above 70,000 would be taxed. That includes investors and capital gains and dividends. They say, the Citibank, that it would take 2% out of GDP in 2011. And even if the uh, Bush tax cuts expire for the top earners and investors, that would take 1% of GDP out of the economy. Congressman Paul Ryan, are the city bankers right? And what are we going to do about this tax attack threat? Well, it cor corroborates with other uh, models I've seen from other economists. I do think you'll see more softening in the economy in 2011 relative to where we are now because of these tax rate increases. Also, I think the Fed's going to hit the brakes. They're going to raise rates, you know, mop up the money supply, to pay interest on reserves. That's going to precipitate some form of a credit crunch. So I, th I see a softening economy with a combination of higher tax rates and tighter money. Bob Rice, how can we go down this path? We have such a strong recovery building and we're going to crush it next year. Well, first of all, let me say that I agree with uh, Congressman Ryan in terms of uh, the, limit, uh, the limits we have on fiscal and monetary policy. It is very likely that the Fed is going to have to start raising rates and uh, be kind of being more restrictive. And it's also uh, true that uh, the stimulus bill is going to be over. Uh, we're not going to have any more stimulus. Uh, so where is the demand going to come from? There is a danger that if you raise taxes on everyone, you could depress demand, undoubtedly. Uh, but raising taxes on people who are earning over $250,000 is not going to repress and depress demand. Uh, that's going to keep the economy going. We've got to raise some taxes if we want to tackle this big debt problem that uh, uh, Congressman Ryan and others are, are, now, are now tackling on the, on the deficit commission. You know, Paul Ryan, the Citibank economists do note that even if it's only the upper end, that is uh, roughly those 5% of the people make 30% of the income and spend mm -hmm. up to 40% on, you know, overall consumer spending. They also predict a 10 to 15% stock market correction from the investment tax hikes alone. Mm -hmm. Now, I ask you, how in God's name can we go down this road? Well, we shouldn't. I mean, now, look, I just disagree. We're raising tax rates on capital gains, on dividends, on income. More than 60% of our jobs come from small businesses. Most of them file as passive entities, subchapter S corporations, partnerships. Their tax rates are going up. That is not good for economic growth. That raises the barrier and the hurdle to risk-taking investment, innovation, entrepreneurship, job creation. And so, yes, I think that is bad tax policy, and I think it's bad economic growth policy. I know Robert probably doesn't agree with me, but that's just the way I see it. And I use history as my barometer to, to lead me to those conclusions. Well, look, I use history, too, uh, Congressman. And I'm very respectful of, uh, of small businesses and also all of the needs we have for economic growth. Uh, but if you go back into history, you see that some of the fastest growth we had uh, was in the three decades after the Second World War. And taxes, marginal income taxes on the most wealthy people in this country were much higher in those three decades than they've been since. I would say that a lot of people park their money in C corporations at those times, but more importantly, we're in a global economy. So what our tax rates are relative to our foreign competitors matters so much more in this 21st century economy than it did back in those days as well. Well, that's true. That is absolutely true. But we have got to invest in education and in infrastructure. We've got to do a lot of building of public investment in this country. If we don't have the funds, we can't just go continually deeper and deeper into debt. Oh, you I know agree that with that. as well as I do. I think I agree with that, but I, I put out a bill that to actually pay off the debt. We've got to do entitlement reform. We've got to tighten our belt. We've got to get spending on the right trajectory. And it, look, if you want to have these kinds of investments in infrastructure, education, things like that, we've got to get a grip on entitlements because they're crowding everything out of the budget. And I would argue if we do real entitlement reform, which doesn't hurt people in and near retirement right now, but puts us on a better trajectory going forward, that's going to give us some breathing space in the credit markets. It's going to take pressure off of interest rates, and that's going to help the economy in the real term right now. Well, I'm, Congress, the big question is what kind of entitlements are we going to reform? I mean, Social Security well, is... all of them is, we is, need is, to. Well, Social Security is a low-hanging fruit. I mean, you can mm -hmm. raise the retirement age slightly, uh, you can raise the cap on the percentage of income subjected to Social Security taxes, and you can solve the problem. And the big problem, even after the Health Act goes into effect, is, that, is Medicare, the increasing yes, Medicare entitlement costs because you've got the baby boomers and you've got health care costs going yeah. up. 
And what are, what are you going to do about it? I mean, even now, after the health bill was enacted, you've got uh, seniors who are who are screaming. Once the baby boomers but, are actually yeah. there uh, as a political can, uh, coalition. Can I uh, jump in uh, I, before? I agree with that. that. He's exactly right about that. we got to do this fast, because if we wait for more and more people, the 40 million of retirees to become 80 million retirees, you know, it's over. But Bob Rice, I, I want to say this. Look, you, you are aware of this Greece debt crisis that is developing. And I want to note today, Jeff, Gentlemen, the price of gold hit a year to date high and it is climbing back to twelve hundred dollars. That's a very odd mm. thing in the absence of any current inflation. I think there's a flight out of debt. And my concern is that we are all Greece now or we might be all Greece now. Bob, when you talk about making public investments in these various areas, I would argue we are overspending rapidly. That is the cause of the debt. That's why people are fleeing currency and going into gold. Mm -hmm. Tax hikes will never solve that, Robert. We need to lower spending. we got to bite the bullet. Well, Larry, they're different. You have, to, you have to be clear about whether you're talking about spending or investment. I mean, right now, our schools are being clobbered. Teachers are being cut. Uh, school days are going, uh, you're going to, school week's going to four days in many states. Uh, we're cutting history after school programs, cutting preschool programs, uh, public education uh, in terms of higher education. Fees are going up. You know, we are eating our seed corn. I, and and to, to, to actually say that those are those are that's wasteful spending uh, it, it really reverses the the absolute truth i mean we need well, I don't, I don't more investment in education we uh, mean and the same thing larry the same is true of, of already, infrastructure but, uh, paul ryan haven't we already spent cajillions of dollars on these accounts i mean you got governors like chris christie in new jersey who are saying enough is enough the increases of 75 and 100 percent over the last half dozen years have to be curbed, Paul. Isn't that part of the issue? Yeah. You're on the deficit commission. You had your first meeting yesterday. What's going to come out of that and what's your reasoning? Well, I can't tell you what's going to come out of that. We just had our first meeting yesterday, so I, I, who knows what's going to come out of it. Hopefully, real spending control and reform is going to come out of it from my perspective. Um, but what, what Bob was saying, no one's saying that education spending is wasteful setting, but a lot of us are saying a lot of these dollars aren't even reaching the classroom and actually helping children. Let's get these dollars to the classroom, make them more effective. But remember, here in Washington, only six cents on the dollar in education spending comes from the federal government. The other 94 cents come from state and local governments. So that is really where education reform begins and ends. But, but Congressman, with all due respect, the, the entire discretionary, federal discretionary budget, yes, so we're not talking about, I mean, if you take defense Fine. out of it, that $750 billion a year out of it, how much do you have left? You've got about 16% so left. Bob, I mean, are you very, saying we should do more discretionary slice. spending? We've, we've already had like an 86% increase in non-defense discretionary spending over the last two years. I mean, how much more of a double-digit increase in discretionary spending do you want? Well, my only this point is, is a huge problem. Point is a fairly, it, my only point is a fairly small. You've got to go after entitlements if you're going to go after yes. them. You've got to go after defense. $750 billion a year. It's, going to, it's 20 percent of the entire federal budget in five years. I, Why can't we do a better job on defense? We're going to have to close this down. You guys are both terrific, distinguished yeah. thinkers. But I just want to say that I communed with Milton Friedman just before showtime. And Milton, <laughs> who has passed away, uh, bless his Uncle soul, Milty. I communed with him. And he said to me, if we don't cut spending, then we are going to have to raise taxes tax rates astronomically, and that'll crush prosperity for years to come. That was what Milton told me, and we communed. Paul Ryan, I want to thank you for your time very don't, much. Don't cut critical public investments. All right. right. That's Listen all Listen to saying. Uncle Milty. All right. I like <laughs> Uncle Milty. Robert Reich, as always, you're terrific for helping us out this evening. Thanks, Larry.